now we will talk about the toxic shock syndrome which is a very important topic in the staphylococcus aureus uh, this toxic shock syndrome is a potentially fatal multi-system disorder okay so it is a multi-system disorder caused by excessive release of cytokines i mean excessive uh, immunological activity leads to this multiple organ failure leading to the toxic shock syndrome so it is a potentially fatal multi-system disorder this is caused by two things one is the toxic shock syndrome toxin okay and the other other thing is the pyogenic exotoxin which is released by the group a streptococcus so this toxic shock syndrome toxin this is released by the staph aureus this is of two types one is the tst1 and the other one is the tst2 TST toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 is also called as the enterotoxin F or you can say enterotoxin F is uh, also called as the TST 1 so TST 1 and TST 2 cause this toxic shock syndrome most commonly but other than that the pyogenic exotoxin which is released by the group A streptococcus also causes this toxic shock syndrome what are the risk factors how does this toxic shock syndrome occurs so the risk factors for the occurrence of this toxic shock syndrome are the highly uh, absorbable tampons during menstruation so if a lady uses uh, highly absorbable tampons during menstruation for prolonged period okay then there is high chances of development of that toxic shock syndrome other than that if there is staphylococcus abscess or if there is osteomyelitis or there is wound infection with the staph aureus for a very prolonged period without treatment or if there is post-surgical infection with the staph aureus without treatment for a very long time then there are chances of development of the toxic shock syndrome so these are the risk factors of the toxic shock syndrome what is the pathogenesis of the toxic shock syndrome so the pathogenesis of the toxic shock syndrome includes uh, the toxic shock syndrome toxins okay the toxic shock syndrome toxins so all the above mentioned toxins uh, toxins but whatever we have mentioned TS, tsst1 tsst2 they all are the super antigens so what does this super antigens do the property of the super antigens is that they bind to the variable beta region of the T cell receptor remember this receptor for whole life for the super antigen super antigens always bind to the variable beta region of the T cell receptor what happens after that binding so after that binding there is non non specific activation of the T cells okay there is a uh, non specific activation of the T cells that leads to excessive production of the cytokines leading to cytokine storm okay that leads to cytokine storm and after cytokine storm there of course multi-system organ failure other than this, so here we have the pictorial depiction of whole pathogenesis whatever we have talked till now see there this is the t cell this is the t cell receptor and on t cell this is the variable beta region on the t cell and the TST is going to bind to that T uh, variable beta region of the T cell receptor and when it binds to the uh, variable beta region of the T cell receptor there is non-specific activation leading to release of excessive cytokines and these excessive cytokines cause the multi-system involvement and the multi-organ failure followed by desquamation of the skin so what are the clinical features that we see if there is toxic shock syndrome so the clinical features that we see are the five most important features which are which lead to clinical diagnosis of TSST are the fever, rash, discommission of skin, hypotension and more than three organ involvement okay dysfunction of more than three organs. So if all these five features are present then it is very likely to be a case of toxic shock syndrome now how will we diagnose for diagnosis we have to collect the specimen based on the lien we will collect the specimen we do the direct microscopy if there is gram positive cocaine cluster then it is indicating staph aureus and if it is gram positive cocaine chain then it is indicating streptococcus infection then you will do the catalase test if the catalase is positive then it is staph aureus if it is negative then it is streptococcus after that we can do the serology as well 
serology also so in serology we tend to detect the or we try to detect the tsst toxic shock syndrome toxin and that detection can be done by the latex agglutinase and test elisa pcr to detect the tst gene 1 and gene 2 after that we have the treatment so treatment can be done by the penicillin resistant to beta lactamases like the cloxacillin oxacillin uh, then uh, methicillin and all like that uh, those penicillins can be used for treatment and along with the penicillin we can also use the clindamycin we not can but we have to use the clindamycin with the penicillin okay, why because the clindamycin decreases synthesis of the toxins so so that's why we use both of these penicillin this is all about the toxic shock syndrome